I would like to invite those that came to stand up. We're going to read the book of Luke. Uh, the very end, Gospel Luke. Chapter 24. Luke 24. We can read from verse 25 onwards. Luke 24, 25. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart, hear to believe in all the prophets have spoken. O not the Christ to have uh, suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself then they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone farther but they constrained him saying Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then they, their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn with us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that, day, that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the leavened and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and he appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Amen. On to verse 35, let us pray. Let us close our eyes. Hallelujah. Let us sing this song. Uh, Lord, stay with us. We give you, Lord, because we are a living God. You are operating in this place through the songs of praise, through the prayers of gratitude to you, through your word. We give you hallelujah, God, for your care towards each one who entered here in this holy place. Speak with us, Lord. We need to hear your voice. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may sit. My brethren, we have studied the book of Revelations. And in this morning, the Sunday school spoke about the letter of Mer, uh, Smyrna. Church of Smyrna speaks of a little plant It's called myrrh. Then when it's crushed, it exhale a uh, perfume that is very pl pleasing. And this perfume is used in, in many goods that is ma are mentioned in the Old Testament. They're all of anointing in the Old Testament, right? 
the oil that was used in the tabernacle to anoint the, the priests, they used myrrh. There's a message that is very rich that speaks of myrrh in the life of the Lord Jesus from its from his birth when they brought presents to Jesus it was myrrh it was gold frankincense and myrrh prophesizing what was going to be the life of the Lord Jesus and his ministry his suffered ministry was crushed he was crushed by our transgressions and by our sins the punishment that brings us peace today we just glorify the name of the Lord our hearts rejoice but this peace that we feel is because he was crushed by our, by our transgression by our sins and in the life of the Lord Jesus myrrh appears in many moments the goods that the gift that they the goods that they brought to embalm Jesus myrrh was one of them and many other de details but I want to call the attention to the brethren is about the message about Smyrna and you heard this morning for three times there is a reference in the book of Revelations about the word death you have the Bible open do you have the Bible open Revelations 2 personally said that too We're not going to take very long. Revelation 2, verse 8. Read with me. Did you open the Bible? And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, This thing says the first and the last who was dead. So here it makes a reference. He was killed, but he was risen from the dead. He's alive. Jesus is alive here. I'll repeat for those that didn't hear. Jesus is alive in this place. Glory to God. You want to see another one? Verse 10. Read with me. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tempted, tested and you will have tribulation ten days. Pastor Judith explained it persecution of the Roman Empire the emperors there but see at the end of the verse be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life the verse didn't finish on death no because the this word death is fatally defeated be faithful to death and I'll give you the crown of eternal life here again the parallel between death and life and observe the following verse. Hear with me. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. So they will live eternally. Second death is uh, uh, eternal damning. But we are going to have life. But why do we have life? I ask you, my brother, why do we have life? Because death was overcome. Paul says that um, daring death, death, where are you, your shackles? Where is your victory, death? Death is being defeated. But have you defeated death? Have I defeated death? No, but Jesus defeated death. There on the beginning of the gospel in Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman uh, he said, this will wound your head and, I will, and you hurt its uh, heel. The enemy wounded the heel of Jesus with that, thinking that it was going to be like every other God that had been risen in the whole history of humanity. But he forgot of the promise from Genesis. Jesus crush uh, hurt the head of the serpent you know how with his resurrection so the resurrection my brethren my beloved the visitors beloved visitors children also they are here they sang beautifully the youth that praise the Lord the resurrection is the basis of the gospel Paul says 
if our hope is only on this life, our gospel is a gospel of uh, miserable. And we've seen people that embrace only this life. And they want the gospel for this life alone. A gospel of prosperity, something like this. They pick up a little patch of the Bible and want to put this as the center of their their their, their beliefs. Uh, have we missed anything? The Lord has given. God is prosperous. The servant of the Lord is prosperous. But this is not the central truth of the gospel. The central truth of the gospel is that Jesus Christ died. Jesus Christ was buried, but He is erected and He is alive. So our target is life. Our message is a message of life. Our hope is life, eternal life, life with quality. And resurrection, my brethren, was something that brought to us something that was wonderful, which is our fellowship with God. Resurrection marked an amazing meeting. And one of this is the one we just read, the disciples and the pet. The pet path to Emmaus. I want to mention another one, and when Jesus reveals himself to Mary Magdalene, the first manifestation of, of Jesus there, she went there to do something interesting. She was wanted to go to give her homage to the dead. Uh, that's what many people want to do with Jesus. They, they want to give an homage to Jesus, make a celebration to Jesus, c carry Jesus' body do many things that remind of somebody that died, the dead. But when she arrived there, the brethren are reading all this story. She thought that Jesus was the gardener. And she asked, Why did you put his body? Tell me, because I want to carry him. I want to take care of his body. My brethren, Jesus is not a uh, historical God, a God of the past, a God that needs to be carried around. There are many people that want to carry Jesus around, like an, uh, a few with objects and other people with uh, thoughts. Well, I think this about Jesus, or my thoughts are, those are my thoughts regarding Jesus. You are transporting, you are making Jesus according to your own will, so, in fact, you are your own God using the name, the name of Jesus. But she had not recognized the Jesus that was being resurrected. And tonight, the Lord wants to manifest Himself to many lives here that He is different. Jesus cannot be carried by us. Jesus cannot be carried, but he is the one that, that guide us, he carried us. And he said, Mary, he called her by her name, and immediately she recognized the Lord. Do you think that it may have happened to some of us here? With many, when we, when the Lord called us by our name, and calling by the name is, doesn't mean exactly our name, but what is happening to our hearts is when the Lord reveal our our interior, our thoughts, our projects, and we can shout what she shouted, Master, Master. It is teaching of the Lord that comes through the fellowship, through the revelation of Je living Jesus, resurrected Jesus. You leave this place saying, only Jesus can know my heart. Only Jesus was able to speak with me because no one else knows this. How many, my brethren? We're going to give assistance uh, after the service. And people ask, who told you uh, about my life? And we don't even know. <laughs> Why? Because in fact, it's the Holy Spirit that speaks many times things that we didn't even say here. Sometimes we are in the corridor uh, giving assistance to the people on the benches. And, and the person said, then when the pastor said this, and 
then I say, well, I didn't say that. But the Holy Spirit of God spoke to their hearts because Jesus is alive amongst us. He is the one that have uncovers the secrets of your heart because he wants to reveal not a, like a, a God to be carried around, a God to be idealized, but a God that will guide your life as a master, as the one that is going to give you fellowship so we can walk in his presence. I'm the resurrection and life, Jesus said. Whoever believes in me, even if he's dead, he will live again. In the second example, we can see it's this one of the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. We haven't read the whole text because it's a very long text. But they were walking, speaking about uh, what Jesus had been. Jesus, all, everything of the past, a historical Jesus. A Jesus according to what many like to preach about. Because in fact, my brother, the story of Jesus is a wonderful story. There are many movies that have been made. And Jesus did this. A boy that was born poor, that faced the authorities, and that changed history. This alone is a wonderful thing. The story of Jesus is wonderful. But many go through the story of Jesus until the tomb. And they end the story in the tomb, in the death of Jesus. And these two disciples, they were walking, talking about this. And Jesus came close to them. And it's interesting that they left Jerusalem. It is 11 kilometers unto Emmaus. They were talking, and Jesus approached them. And see, my brethren, the mercy, the patience of the Lord Jesus towards the uh, unbelieving. They had their hearts closed. Jesus came close to them. And they didn't recognize that it was Jesus. You know what was the first word of the Lord Jesus? It may have been the word that He wants to tell to your heart tonight. Why are you sad? Jesus asked him, Why are you sad? And he was even uh, mocked. Oh, you're the only one uh, foreigner here that doesn't know what is going on in this land. And Jesus kept walking with them. What happened? And they mentioned, we're speaking about the Jesus, the Nazarene. Nazareth. They speak about Jesus, the Nazareth, the despised. They didn't speak of about Jesus, the son of David, because then it would be according to the prophecy. But they spoke about Jesus, the Nazareth. He was born in Nazareth. The despised man. He was a powerful man in, in works, in words. But all of this in the past, my brethren, the Jesus we are preaching about is the Lord of our lives. He is the God present. He is the God of the future. He said, I am. I am. He wants to reach your life tonight. You know, to transform your life and continue to guide and transform your life until you are able to reach eternity. He didn't go. The story of Jesus is wonderful. It serves as basis for many things. But he doesn't end in the death. If you go to Israel, there are two tombs there. The Roman said, the Roman Catholic said that it's here, and the others say that it's there. The evangelicals said it's there. But they, they both have something in common. If you go there, there's no sign saying. I was saying that by the guides. The tomb is empty. There's nobody inside there. If you go to visit the tombs of the people there are adored, like the God, they're there in their tombs. But our God he is alive. He resurrected. And more than that, He is walking among us tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, my brother. He made mention of walking away, but they said, no, Jesus, stay with us. But Jesus, before he began to preach about the gospel of the living word, and this is what God wants to do with your heart tonight, because only the living word can burn in our hearts. 
if there is a mess, a person, a preacher reading a story, he can pick up a mess of a great preacher and read here and will leave this place empty. But when the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, it may be a simple word. It burns your heart. It burns your soul. It reaches, it quenches the thirst of your soul, the hunger of your soul. And you can never stop. You don't want to stop hearing the voice of the Lord. And they invited Jesus, and Jesus entered. And for sure, they were hungry. And it was the end of the day. They gave bread to him. And when Jesus broke the bread, he gave both of them. And this action, my brother, is a characteristic action of Jesus because it was prophetic. When he breaks the bread, he's saying, I died for you. I died. I was crushed by your transgressions. But when he gives the bread, he's giving life. He's saying, I died, but I resurrected. And now the church is the body of Christ. is a living body of Christ because Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. What a wonderful thing. So then their eyes opened. So in their first appearance to the Mary Magdalene here, Jesus presented himself as a master. Now, in the walk, in, in the walk, he was presented as a fellow person. That oh, Jesus is the master, but only through your walk in your, in your spiritual life, he can teach you. But he is, is your friend. But a few days, I was speaking to a, a brother, a friend, not much longer um, ago from today and he he said pastor i need a shoulder maybe you entered here tonight needing needing a shoulder not of your not necessarily of your wife or of your husband or of your parents or maybe of your children but a shoulder that knows your heart the one that has dried uh, your tears that needs to walk a little farther with you in spite of your incredulity and they will have patience to hear everything that you're going to say about the past everything that is afflicting your soul but at the right time and today is in the service he's going to reveal himself to you as a divine a friend, a shoulder that is a friendly shoulder that is that knows your heart, knows the affliction of your soul. Sometimes your words may fly like words thrown at the wind, but tonight you know that there is a living God that has resurrected, that overcame death, that He is here walking among amongst us and is offering His uh, friendly shoulder to hear your words. My brethren, when we recognize that Jesus has resurrected and He hears our prayers and He speaks with us and He has patience with us and He walks with us in the moment of, of affliction, we recognize that He has resurrected and He died for us. And so our hearts opened up, our eyes open up and we will leave this place saying, Oh Lord, you are this living God. You are this God that has resurrected and this fellowship that we have with the Master. You also have you as a friend, as a true friend. And they came back. They left their houses. Truly, they left the bread there and came back running to Jerusalem and entered where the Eleven were gathered, afraid, afraid of the authorities, the Roman authorities and Jewish authorities. Jesus had been killed in prisons and he was hit and they were hidden away. He had already heard uh, the testimony of the women, they, but their hearts were was still hardened. But then Jesus presented to them in another text in John. And he said, Peace be with you. What a glorious God. What a God, wonderful God that gives peace, that gives fellowship. And that, my brethren, Jesus entered and presented himself as the true 
brother. Jesus is the Almighty God. The Bible said all the power is given to him. And he measures eternity and measures heavens on the palm of his hand. He counts the stars. He's the creator of God. And the Bible said that all the things have been made by him and nothing that has been made was done without him. He is the creator and he sustained his work. But in spite of this, he pre is preoccupied with you and I. He's our master. He's our friend. But he's also our brother. Do you know what that means, my brother and sister? We have an eternal inheritance. Jesus is he, he is the one who died and resurrected to tell you and I, you're going to die, but you're not going to remain in eternal death. You will resurrect. This is what's going to happen to you, my brother. If Jesus does not die, if Jesus comes back tonight, our bodies are going to be transformed. We will be raptured and you will be we will be forever with him. But if Jesus doesn't come, you're going you are not going to remain on a cold tomb. You're gonna to, to be seven feet underground or be, uh, burned on the furnace or only dust will be left of you. This is a body, my body, that's all right. This is the result of matter. But the Bible says that Paul Paul said I love to be with the brethren, but I, I'm counting the days to be with the Lord Jesus Christ because it is infinitely better. What happens when we die? We go immediately to the presence of the Lord. To die in Christ is this, is to be with Him. And our bodies, our bodies are going to be resurrected and there will be a meeting of our soul and spirit with the glorified body in the day of rapture. So, my brethren, this day is a, the, the God that we're preaching about, is the God that didn't pass, the God of history, but a God that is present, that wants to invite you and I to walk with Him. He said, I am, I am the door, I am the path and the truth and the life, I am the good shepherd. He is always saying in the present, I am the resurrection and life. Jesus is, He is here, a life resurrected ready to give you the best gift that you can ever have which is the fellowship with him and eternal life do you want this do you accept this the bible says if your mouth we confess you confess jesus as your savior and in your heart you believe that he god has resurrected him from the dead you will be saved. So you can say, Pastor, I believe. I believe. And you will not only believe, but you say in loud voice, Lord, I recognize that God resurrected Jesus from amongst the dead, and that you are alive, and that you have eternal life. And when you say this, the enemy of your soul will be destroyed. Where is death? You are shackled. Where is death? Your, your victory. Jesus defeated death. We believe, we serve, we sing, we praise a God to a God that is alive, that receives our adoration. It cannot be carried around, but we will transport your life, but cannot be guided, but we will guide your life as He has guided our lives. And you were invited to receive him in your heart. Close your eyes.
Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. church to stand up let's have a word of adoration to the Lord for this promise that is the coming of the Lord Jesus that will be fulfilled very soon in our lives I will praise you because we're happy we're privileged because no affliction in this world will remove take away our greatest joy which which is to be with you in eternity. Lord, we praise you for everything, for the Lord that you have for your people, even though we are not deserving, but you take care of our lives. We can feel, Lord, upon our lives. We can feel the songs that have been sang that came from our eternity and came towards our hearts. We thank you for everything in the name of your Son, Jesus, and bless in the name of the Lord. The Lord for sure spoke to our hearts in a way that is wonderful through the service, through the praises, through the word. But the Lord also has a message to a woman that entered here tonight. A revelation from the Lord that says that this woman is going to many difficulties in her life, difficult moments, moments of tribulation, moments difficult to withstand. And she may have even thought about taking her life away how, showing how much pain she has been going through. My sister, that's not the solution. Don't do this. Tonight, the Lord has for you something that you have never experienced before, which is to live in peace and security in the presence of Jesus. Receive this. The Lord knows you. He loves your life. He wants to be a good shepherd be a sheep of this good shepherd 
the Lord wants to take care of your life, bring peace to your interior. And now you need to have the assurance that the solution of your problems is in accepting Him as the Savior of your life. Amen. I'm going to pray, finishing the service. If you still need, we are here at the, your disposal, the pastor, the deacons and the ushers. We want you to receive the complete blessing from the part of God. What God has reserved for you tonight, you may leave this place with the knowledge that He loves your life. Amen. Let us close our eyes and finish the service. Lord God, we praise your name because it, it is with joy that we came up to your house. And it's with joy, Lord, that we are here singing praises to your name, expressing to you our gratitude for your deeds, for everything that you have, have done in our homes, in our families, in our lives, God, for the peace, for the assurance, for the security, for the care, for the provision for the part of the Lord. Lord, we want only to give to you glories and the hallelujahs and to say that you are our God. Receive our worship and take us home in peace that we may have a week of victories in your presence. Is a prayer that I say in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down once again. And if you desire, as a church, it will remain in prayer. The instrument uh, softly playing. We place ourselves at your disposal to pray for you. You may raise your hand or ask someone to raise their hand on your behalf and we will go and we want to pray for you if you desire. Amen. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.